Kishpin, we may know yet, but not in Kishpin, we win an andal goes at Wenigo. Pigotche Jagi, Chinas Kangi, we nan in Gagizimini goes it. Gemini told we mean an anishinabe, Kenage, go on in Gay in Chaya, me where Gaijinica take Minopi Madison. Good morning, everyone, and especially to the elders. This morning, I acknowledge the elders have always had a very significant role in our society as Anishinaabe people. It was the elders that always reminded the people of how we should be living, how we should be behaving, and how we should walk as Anishinaabe people. Whenever prayers are done, prayers are always done to invoke the, the spirit and the grandfathers to come within our presence, to be around us, to guide us, to teach us, to protect us. There was a law that our people believed in, that they practiced, and it was called the great binding law of the Creator. And our people knew, recognized, acknowledged that everything that was created was connected to this higher power of spirit that we refer to as our great Creator. It was the Creator that created everything that we, that we are, everything that we see, and everything that we can be is, you know, is derived through the blessing of our great Creator. It is said that the first teaching that was given was the teaching of respect, which was symbolized by the buffalo. In a language I would say, Kimini was an Ishinabe, Chikendangi Manachiti, and Gat Konangeshkodebijiki. And to know respect is really to know how to give. Think of the buffalo when there were millions and millions of buffalo running across the prairies and giving of themselves so that the people could survive. Every part of that buffalo was used, the bones, the inside of the buffalo, everything was used. That's how much the buffalo, how much he, he respected the people, that that buffalo gave every part of its being. What a beautiful way of life, you know, to, to know and recognize how important that respect is. And the second teaching was the teaching of love, which was symbolized by the eagle. It has always been understood, the essence and the spirit that is within each of us carries the, the, the energy and the spirit of love. We were created through the unconditional love of the, of the Great Spirit. Can you and you know whenever the ceremonies are carried on, whether you're going in a sweat or in a sun dance or any of the ceremonies, that eagle comes. You go to the sacred site, you go and make your offerings and the eagle appears. Probably the, the three most powerful words that can be said, I love you, I love you. In our language they say, Apajig is powerful. The moment that you begin to say that, something happens inside here, inside of you, in your spirit and your heart. That's powerful words to say. Love is the energy. Love is the spirit that has everything to do with life. The third teaching that the people were given that laid the foundation of having a good life was the teaching of courage. And the bear was always there to offer that spirit of courage. <laughs> You gotta have courage. And what is it to have courage for what? You got to have courage to do the right thing. There's many, many different ways to do the wrong thing, but only one way to do the right thing that's expressed in the heart. And it takes a lot of courage. Do you have the courage to be a Nishinaabe? To really live and walk the teachings of your people? People that understand the teachings, you would take the tobacco and then you would go to the land and say, Grandfather, you know, help me. Help me to have courage to do the right thing. And that bear comes. Spiritually, that bear will come. Will come and help you to give you the courage to do the right thing. And the fourth teaching that we were given was the teaching of honesty that was represented by the one they call Sabe or Bigfoot. Honesty to our people meant that you, you know, that you learn to speak from your heart, get out of your head, get out of your mind, because your mind is gonna is gonna lead you many times opposite of what 
what the heart is trying to express. To be honest is to be able to be true to your word. So that Sabe was always there to, to offer that, uh, that, that inspiration, you know, in, in, in being honest. How to be honest. Now that's a good one, that one. I remember growing up and, you know, the elders, whenever they agreed to something, they would shake their hand and say, yeah, it'll be done. They didn't need to write on paper on any agreement or contract. Their contract was their heart because the truth was spoken from their heart. And the old people would always say is that you, 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 you learn to speak from the heart. The fifth teaching was the teaching of wisdom that was represented by the beaver. And to, to know wisdom is to know that you, you, have, you have a gift. So that beaver has always been there to, to help us to remember that if we want to build a better life, you know, we have to use the, the gifts that, that we have. Everyone was given a gift. You have a gift, you have a gift, you have a gift. But to know wisdom is once you know your gift, you use that gift to serve the people, to serve your family and to serve your community. That's wisdom. The beaver, whenever the fire goes through, the beaver will come first. <laughs> And he'll work with the water and he's going to fix it up and everything starts to get green. And all these other animals start to come, the ducks and, the, you know, all these other animals, they come and it's, it's beautiful. But the beaver is the one that goes in first. What's he doing? He's building. And what is he using to build is those two sharp teeth that he has. Now if that beaver just lay on the shore and not using his gift of sharp teeth to cut trees, his teeth would grow long and he would die. That applies to all of us. If you don't use your gift, you're going to get sick. Everyone was given something. The sixth teaching is the teaching of humbleness that was represented by the wolf. And the wolf was there to, to remind us to live a humble life. And to live a humble life is to acknowledge, first of all, that there is a higher power of spirit that we, of course, as a people, referred to as the great mystery, the great creator. When you walk down the trail and that wolf is walking that same trail and is walking towards you, the first thing that wolf is going to do is going to stop and he's going to bow his head. Not because he's scared of you. He's humbled by the presence of the human being. To know humbleness is to think of your fellow human being before you think of anybody else. That you always think of your brothers and your sisters, you always think of the elders, you always think of those before you think of yourself. To know truth through the, the grandmother turtle, you know, who has brought the teaching of truth, is to know that we cannot live truth until we're able to, to live the teachings as they've been, you know, shared and expressed. Me <laughs> When we say the turtle in our language, we say mikinak. And then we say that the turtle mikanake, that, trail, that, that turtle is leaving a trail that we are to follow. What is the turtle carrying? The turtle is carrying the teachings of respect, love, courage, uh, honesty, wisdom and humility. That's what that grandmother is carrying. I feel you know, the, the richness of who we are as Anishinaabe people. And that richness comes in the knowledge and the understanding that we have. And when we look at the seven teachings, 
that we have and hold that have evolved over thousands and thousands of years. The teachings that we are given reflect the identity of the spirit that is in each and every one of us. You carry all those teachings inside of you. As long as you have an ounce of blood of Anishinaabe, you have the genetic memory to know those teachings. The holy spot of our people is the knowledge, the ceremony, the language, and the relationship that we have with the land. That's the holy spot of our people. What an awesome gift that the Creator gave us as Anishinaabe people.